Hi, this is Chris. Well, so my team at, and I have been uh, working on the uh, sequencing technology development for about 10 years. And during this process, um, we have successfully uh, developed uh, the MGI uh, sequencing technology. And also, um, we have tried some uh, very interesting projects. For example, um, because our sequencing slides have billions of nanoballs, and each nanoball has different barcodes. So previously, we have tried um, by adding the CRISPR enzymes onto our slides to distinguish whether um, it can discover the PAM sequence. And it turns out that it's a very uh, robust and effective uh, platform. And after that, because uh, at that time, we were um, developing the single cell um, sequencing technology and um, by using the microwell system. But um, the major bottleneck is the uh, boson uh, distribution. So uh, we're thinking, what if uh, we use the sequencing slides to do barcoding? And after that, we're, we thought, OK, can we put the tissue sections directly onto the slides? Then we don't need any uh, cell uh, segmentation. Uh, so that's the start of the SDNs. So uh, in the next few months, we will be celebrating our third anniversary. So yeah, it will be the third year of this technology. Um, uh, first of all, it uh, expands our capability because previously we were just um, developing the sequencing technology and after that we uh, found out that we not only can do uh, DNA sequencing but also uh, in situ or uh, captured uh, sequencing that is a uh, brand new uh, realm for us and the other is that um, this technology can really achieve that nobody can achieve the um, resolution and the field of view. And it really can accelerate uh, the biomedical um, uh, insights. So, Of course, um, because uh, in the early stage of this uh, development, we found out that the stereotype uh, requires uh, something that um, sequencing does not uh, really requires. For example, the nanoballs in our uh, sequencing technology, it needs to withstand hundreds of rounds of the sequencing reagents and heatings, all that stuff. So um, the DMB needs to be very, very stable. However, for the stereoseq, we need to extract those RNAs and then uh, release from the slides. So these directions are totally different. We need to develop uh, new uh, methods to do it more efficiently. So that's our, our bottlenecks. Well, for, I think for the most people, they would say, oh, very fantastic, or uh, it's perfect. But for us, um, comparing to the standard that we are currently have, um, I think it's a little bit crappy. However, um, uh, that is the first image that uh, generated in our own platform. So I would say it's very uh, meaningful, not only to us, but all, also to the whole team. I would say very excited, however, um, a little bit um, feel more responsible for our users because what we want to achieve is that um, all our users, uh, when they receive the stereoseq uh, kits, they can generate uh, the similar performance. And that requires a lot of um, efforts to make it more stable and more affordable. Well, I think uh, for the spatial uh, multiomics, 
Um, currently, we only can achieve uh, spatial transcriptomics. But however, in the future, we can um, do like uh, spatial um, uh, proteomics or spatial uh, methylation and all these uh, omics that can really generate the data and help us to um, expand our uh, insights into the biological fields or the medical fields. Uh, for the stereotype part, we really want to um, contribute to this uh, process and make this um, technology more affordable and accessible.